I've demonstrated creating a Kubernetes cluster on GCP and uh, we have deployed the workloads and uh, created the services. Uh, we've also tried around our hand by uh, scaling the application as well as, uh, you know, uh, updating it using rolling updates. Now, all of this so far uh, that you have seen is been done using the GCP console. Now I'm going to show you how to actually manage Kubernetes cluster using the Kubernetes's own way that is using the CLI tool that uh, that is kubectl. Kubectl is also called as kube control and to install that you have an option to do that using this cloud shell. Cloud shell is a great option because you don't have to install anything locally with cloud shell. Cloud shell gives you or sets up an interface or a shell in environment on the browser itself through the browser itself. So you don't have to install anything and it configures everything on its own. So I have just clicked on that cloud shell and uh, it has set it uh, set up itself. It comes with the utilities but you still need to provide the configuration. So I pro choose that coop cuttle option and choose setup and that would help me create a shell with the environment setup for coop CTL to operate. So all I have to do here is press enter because I already see those commands in for G cloud container cluster get credentials and then kubectl get deployment front end. So it basically goes ahead and sets up the environment for kubectl itself to operate. Now, Coop CTL, as it is called, Coop CTL, Coop Control, Coop Cuttle. I'll call it as Coop Cuttle, but you can call it either ways. So, if you want to validate the setup, you run Coop Cuttle Get Nodes. That should show you three nodes that are part of this Kubernetes cluster. And if you just run Coop Cuttle, it will show you all the help, including the options that it supports. And most commonly, if you want to get you know uh, information about something, you generally use Get and describe. Apart from that, you can also use, uh, you know, uh, commands such as cluster info to get status of this cluster. So I'm going to start with kubectl cluster hyphen info, which shows me the status of the Kubernetes master, the load balancer, the heapster, which is a monitoring service, kubedns and metrics server. So all of these components have been deployed as part of the Kubernetes control plane, which has been set up and managed by GCP itself or Google container engine to be specified a google uh, kubernetes engine to be precise if you just run kubectl get it shows you all the objects that it can get information for and it's going to be similar to what what is displayed here when you choose let's say services or workloads and uh, you're going to pick the objects for example uh, deployments so either use deployments or a short form which is deploy uh, services uh, is another important thing you can use either as services service or svc as the short form so if i run kubectl get deployment it's going to show me the workload. So I can use also use a short form, which is get deploy. And this shows me the exact, you know, similar, um, you know, output as you see in the top window that you would have seen using GCP console. And if I want to get more information about it, I can always use describe. So I'm describing a deployment whose name is front end kubectl describe deploy front end. And this shows me the details about the deployment, how many replicas are running, how, what is the desired size, and uh, you know what each of that replica is running with. So that configuration, again, if you drill down into the workloads and uh, click on any of the deployments, it's the similar output that you're gonna see there. Similarly, if I want to get information about services, I could use describe or get. If you just use describe services, it's going to show you the details about each and every service. I don't want that um, that much of details. I just want to get a list of services. I'm going to get, you know, use kubectl get services, which shows me all the services. Uh, services act as a load balancer and services have endpoint. Out of these, most of those are you know, cluster IP, internal services, which have internal IP. Only one has an external IP, which is the service that I have exposed for the front end application. I could also use kubectl get svc, which is the short form for services. So only one service has been exposed outside using load balancer. That that's the one which has ex, uh, you know external IP. I can also get a list of things by adding uh, comma separated items. So uh, this time I'm listing pods, services, and deployment. So I'm using kubectl get svc comma deploy comma pods. 
and uh, I see four pods running. I can also manage the scale and replicas so I could scale the deployment, specific deployment with a number of replicas. This is the manual scaling. So I use kubectl scale hyphen hyphen replicas is equal to four for deployment. So deploy hy you know, hyphen front end, deploy slash front end rather. And that deployment has been scaled. If I refresh it here, I should see it is active scaling that gradually and if I run get commands again I should have uh, yeah it should have been deployed and I see all four you know pods running for the front end it'll appear here if I refresh it a couple of times and uh, this was a very quick dive into kubectl kubectl command line tool once you start managing kubernetes deployment in a production or production like environments you're gonna start diving into kubectl a lot and you're gonna you extensively use it whether to run these commands or whether to apply the yaml or json files that you would create